wish you in person a uh, happy new year. Uh, what brings us joy and warmth and comfort on a cold morning like this? Well, it seems to me it's because we are beginning together our walk into a new year, not knowing what it holds for us, but living by faith in the one who holds us in every day, daily circumstance and every day. We live by faith and hope for a loving God who dwells with us and in our house and in this church. And that is what I want to dwell upon today is our coming together to walk together as a church and as a church family. I recently discovered a list of 21st century parables, which um, fascinates me because I've always thought we need some new parables. They're a wonderful thing for our teacher to have, uh, and Jesus recognized that, and I believe that no matter what faith the person holds around the world, they are aware of uh, the parable of the, of, the, uh, of the Good Samaritan and of the son who comes back home. So I was interested in this list of, of new parables. And there are four that I picked out. Now three we're not going to talk about today, but the fourth one we will, which is the prodigal son, a new version of the prodigal son. But listen to these other parables and see if they might not have a message for us sometime. There's the parable of a worn out church volunteer, other than, otherwise known as the rabbi of the peace. There's the parable of the yo-yos, which is all about ups and downs. And there's the parable of the unwanted Christmas gift, which uh, is the day that the wrapping was found to be ugly, the wrapping to be So we'll look at those perhaps at another time. But the one to, to look at today has to do with coming home. This is the, the story of the prodigal son. And we're going to talk about what it means to come home in our families and in this church. But let me tell you the modern version of the prodigal son. And perhaps you've heard the story. I understand it's based on a real life circumstance. There was a young boy living at home and was restless, as sometimes happens. And he decided he would leave home left his parents and uh, roamed for a long time, and they lost touch with him. They didn't hear from him for a long time. And as the years went by, they wondered more and more where he might be, and finally they got a letter from prison, which he wrote from and said he'd been in prison for some time, he'd made a mistake, but he was going to get out, and he would like to come home. But he knew that he had not exactly made that a very good possibility. So he said, the train comes through the town, and uh, I'll be on a train on such and such a day. And uh, the, that town is what's known as a whistle stop in the Midwest. The train only stops if somebody's getting off or on, or if there's a package to throw off or on. So it was only going to stop if he was between the cars and told them to stop. He said, there's a tree outside of town, if it's still there, and if you want me to get off, tie a yellow ribbon. You've heard the story. You know what happens. Uh, he's on the train. He approaches the town. He doesn't know what's going to happen. He stands between the coaches, and as he comes to the tree, he sees a yellow ribbon. But not one. The whole tree is covered with yellow ribbons, and every tree between there and the depot is covered with yellow ribbons. That is abundant grace. And he knew he could come home. And that is this modern day story, the prodigal son, and what it means to come home. The word home is a very powerful word, isn't it? It has all sorts of implications and meanings to it. So as we begin our new year together this morning, this journey as a church family, we want to continue to the kind of church which is a church home, where forgiveness, love, joy, and caring for each other prevails. We have all kinds of images of what it means for home. 
and we use the term a lot. Some of those you recognize, you, you probably use them yourselves. Uh, there's no place like home, home sweet home, home on the range, hometown, homecoming, home base, home run. You only make a point when you go home. And lastly, come home. So the, the word is used in many ways, but when you think of the word home, if I were to ask you to close your eyes for just a moment, and I don't mean a building, it could be a tent, it could be an RV, it could be uh, any place where you lived for a while. What was it about that home that made it home? Why is a place destined to be in our mind a home? Let me give you some suggestions. Perhaps it was a place you lived the longest. Perhaps it's where your children grew up, or perhaps you lived abroad for a while, or during the first days of your marriage. Maybe it's your grandparents' home. That's a place I like to remember. Perhaps, perhaps it's a home you built or have built. But why are these homes so memorable to us? Why are you thinking about it today? If I mention the word home, each of you will have a different place, but they will all be a home to you. And then we give this church the qualities of home. This is our church home. There are many of you who have said, when you walk through the doors for the first time into this sanctuary, you had a feeling of being home. You had come home. And I hope every Sunday morning when you walk through those doors, you can have that feeling of grace and of joy that comes from being at a place where you are expected and where you are home. But I have uh, gone a little bit deeper than that to see why people call a certain place a home. What makes a place that way? Well, the first thing that I found is that home is anywhere that is profoundly and amazingly safe, where you feel safe. I hope you all feel safe here. <laughs> but that is a quality of wherever you are which has that composition of providing you with a safe place you may call home. Home is where we experience radical grace and unconditional forgiveness that is undeserved. That's a big order. Radical grace, unconditional forgiveness, that is undeserved. Don and I attended the church in Stockton for a long time where we had a Wednesday night potluck. And it was with the pastor and we discussed the sermon a few days after the sermon. And one time the subject came up is, can your children do anything for which you would not let them come home? I thought it was an easy answer. I didn't see anything that could, they could do that would make that circumstance. But we had some people who said, yes, that was possible. And it, it startled me that anyone could say that. God certainly can't say it. There is nothing that you can do or that I can do where God will not welcome me to this church home and to our home eternally. So home is where we experience radical grace, unconditional forgiveness that is undeserved. Home is where we discover and experience our divine nature. It's where we first learn how to pray. It's maybe may, may be the place where for the first time we sense there is something beyond this world, something beyond a uh, physical and mental self, that there is a spiritual being within us. And for the first time we understand that it can happen in a church home and in the home that you have established. Home is where we find peace, and grace, forgiveness, purpose, and joy. Home is where you feel you belong. I belong here. You belong here. And you have that feeling when you come through the doors, and that's home. 
Home is where we discover moments of transcendence, which is uh, related to what we were saying about uh, our spiritual self. This church home, the way you live, should be at so much peace and so much uh, comfort that you can experience a moment of transcendence into that which is beyond the physical and beyond the mental, which is our spiritual self and our spirits. Um, we have that experience here every Sunday when we circle this sanctuary and sing, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Now, I know that that doesn't happen to each of us every Sunday, but it happens often enough that we don't want to miss it, do we? <laughs> it happens often enough that the wind of the Holy Spirit pushes through the sanctuary and touches each of us for a moment of transcendence beyond the physical and the mental. So home is where you have moments of transcendence. Home is where we first experience prayer, where we are able to abandon the fear of death. That's essential to where we are today in this place. You and I may abandon the fear of death. There's more that God has for us. When we discover God's will for the use of our gifts is where we learn how to love. Home is where they will always take you back. Which, of course, is where we get back to the product of the sun, isn't it? It's where you can always go back. Actually, the feeling of home is what we experience here in this church so very often. So let us begin our 2017 journey this morning as we worship together and are committed and are committed to working together as we walk together in faith and hope and love as a home church. Let us provide such a welcoming place to all who come to our door. Let us invite all to come to this place of unconditional love, of radical grace, undeserved forgiveness, and an outreach of caring that goes around the world. Let us dedicate ourselves today to this kind of a home church, to this kind of a home for our families, to this kind of a home for all of those who cry out to us today from a world that seems to be rocked by dissent and terror so too, way too often. So let it is that we will walk together in 2017. I want to conclude with a poem. You all know I like poems, and I like to find one that is especially um, memorable. This is called The Dawn of a New Day by Grace Young Crowell. This day will bring some lovely thing. I say it over each new dawn some bright, adventurous thing to hold against my heart when it is gone. And so I rise and go to meet this day's with wings on my feet. I come upon it unaware of some sudden beauty without name, a snatch of song, a breath of pine, a poem lit with golden flame, high tangled bird notes, keenly thinned, like flying color on the wing. No day has ever failed me quite. Before the grayest day is done, I come upon some misty bloom or a late line of crimson sun. Each night I pause, remembering some bright, adventurous, lovely thing that calls me home. May it be so for each of you this year, in 2017, as we walk together, coming home to God's presence to a church home.